Hey guys, in this video, I want to go ahead and show you how to set up the new firearm collision system in the Ultimate Multiplayer FPS framework. Now, to sum it up, you really only need two major things, and that's going to be a virtual bone added to your character, which I'll show you how to do, as well as a couple nodes added to your anim graph. And that's really it. So, starting out with the, what we have to do first, I'm going to go ahead and head over to my character skeleton. Now, if I scroll all the way down, You'll see I have this virtual bone here. I just named it Fire Alarm Collision Grip. And what you do to add it is really kind of only really need to add this to the root of your character. That's all. So I'll right click on my root, add virtual bone, and I'll just select the root again. In which case, you'll be coming down here and ask, it'll basically ask you to give it a name. So this name is not important as you can change it be really whatever you want, but I would recommend you call it Firearm Collision Grip, just so you can kind of follow along with this tour a little bit better. Now, that is done. Go ahead and save, and you can close out of that, and you're good to go. Next up, we head over to our Anim Graph. Let me go ahead and move this over here a little bit. We have a couple of things that we need to do. First off, uh, if you're doing any sort of blend per bone to separate the upper and lower body, you are going to want it to happen before the set essentials anim layer. So before it used to be at the very end. Now for this system, because of where the virtual bone is located, you're gonna want to have it be positioned at the beginning. So that's just more or less to kind of keep everything from being overwritten. So that's thing number one. Next up is if we go to class defaults, if we go underneath of collision, you'll see the firearm collision virtual bone. So this is where you actually can change the name if you wish. So if you had a different name set for that virtual bone, you would end up actually setting it right in here. It really doesn't matter as long as you make it match and it'll be good to go. So now what we have to do is head over to set essentials. Now inside of here, you'll see I commented out or commented a couple of things. So here's the firearm collision virtual bone and here's the new actual firearm collision. So if you look through here, if you're familiar with what it looked like before, you'll notice there is no short stock. That has been completely replaced by the collision pose location, and you now do your short stocking through your current firearm pose, which this is new as well. So I'll be walking you through kind of the beginning. So you can really kind of get a, the gist of what all you need to do just by looking through the example character and the example uh, animation blueprint. But for the most part, it's the same. The only difference is a couple of these things have been reordered. So starting from the beginning, after we have our custom pose, we go ahead and we apply the firearm pose location. So this is going to be your high port. So things like this, your high port, your low port, and your short stocking. So you can go in and out of each of those poses, and that's all controlled right through here. Then we go ahead and we apply our sprinting. Same as before, you basically just copy and paste it or just click and drag and move it. And after that, you're going to want to make sure this is before your site location and rotation. Here you want to handle your firearm collision virtual bone. Now what this is doing, it is positioning, <coughs> it is positioning that virtual bone that you added to your root to, first off, to your right hand, and then is adding the offset of your firearm socket. So whatever your firearm is attached to, whatever socket that is, that's where it adds that offset here. So moving on forward, again, can't stress this enough, make sure it is before your site location and rotation. That'll help quite a bit and it'll, you can have it after, but you might run into some small problems in regards to like a hammering effect. Then right after that, we go ahead and we do our firearm collision pose. So this is our actual collision. So when I walk into the wall, I'll go into my short stock and then break down into my actual collision, whatever you have it set as. This is what handles that. So copy and paste that over into yours. And you'll notice down here we have an interpolation. So basically, this is where you control how fast you want it to interpolate in and out. So for reference, here I have it at 12, so if I swipe, let me get a little closer, if I swipe, you can see it's a smooth blend in and out. And if I disable that interpolation, it's basically an instant snap. So this here does not actually interpolate. You want to do that inside of your anim graph. So you can see here, it's just instant snapping. So tweak that however you want. 
12 is around a decent value that I found for the use case of this, but again, it's going to be game dependent. Then after that, you just apply your sway location and you're good to go. So that's really it inside of your anim graph. You just mostly reorganize things a little bit, move your lower body stuff, your at least your blend to the front before set essentials. Then in set essentials, you move, well, you add the current fire and post location rotation. And you move the sprint pose before everything in the green comment. Then your site right after. And then your fire and collision pose right after that. And then the remainder of whatever you have. So this is the order that I have found to just work best. Now, moving on to the settings and what they do. So if we head over here to the example M4, I head down to poses, you will see we have, we still have our short stock pose, but we also have a collision pose. So this is handled the same way, whereas before it just went into your high and low port. Now it'll go into your short stock. Well, when it goes out of your short stock, it'll go into your collision pose instead. So this is where you kind of tweak that. Uh, your short stock, set that in the same manner. And I went ahead and added it up to be part of this, uh, what do you call it, the Pose Customizer widget, so you can tweak it however you need and save it, and then just save it in your blueprint. Now, with collision settings, we have a couple different things. So first off, we have the interpolation speed. So I'll give you an example. Here we have it at 1, or sorry, 10. Let me bump this up to 30, and you will see it's a lot more responsive. So it's basically just, it's going to control how fast you go between these two poses, between your short stock and your collision pose, as well as just how, in general, fast and snappy it is to respond to your movement. Next off, we have the distance before push. So this one's going to be better if I exaggerate it, so I'll bump this up to 10. So here, you'll see when it turns green, that means I've started colliding. So here, basically my muzzle socket's touching. I go a little bit forwards until I hit. So I hit about there. So you can see now I am clipping through. And if I revert that, set that back to 2.5, you can see that I will not be clipping through. I instead, basically the second I touch the wall, it pushes it back out of the way. So that's what that meant to take care of. So it's basically the distance that you can walk into the object before it starts to push you back. So this is to kind of account for things like your muzzle socket, for example, being farther out or too close. It kind of, it's more or less up to you how you want to have it handled. Now the trace radius, if I set this to like five, you can kind of get an assumption because it is a cylinder. The bigger the wrap value, the bigger we get. So here's at five. And then if I revert this back down, sorry, that's it at four. And if I set this at one, you can see it is much smaller. So that affects how you smack into things on the side. So for example, if I walk into this guy, you can see the second that that touches, that's when it triggers. So you just basically gotta tweak it. And I recommend putting this around the size of your handguard. Moving on down, we have the muzzle position offset. So this says you can kind of assume, if I bump it up on the Z axis, I'll just do it by eight you will see the collision cylinder is now up above. So this is now your trace. So basically you have everything like you did before, just at a much higher amount. So here I can start clipping my barrel through, and then it starts hitting because it's up top. And if I reset that back down, then we'll have actual collision as our muzzle touches. So you can move that in the X, Y, and Z axis to really kind of just account for whatever you're situation you need it to be. Again, this kind of works in tandem with the distance before push, so you can choose kind of one or the other if it's only on the uh, y-axis. So it's really just up to you. Then we have the push distance to stop aiming. So right now this is at 8, and I'll bump this up to 24. That should be more than enough. So I'll start aiming, and I'll start walking into the wall. I'll start pushing in, and you can see I'm still able to aim if I let go. You can see I stop aiming, but I'll keep going, and then I finally hit. So that's only because I'm hitting the, uh, what do you call it? I'm going into the collision pose. So if, let me drop this down to like 12 
so that way it's a little better visual. So as I start walking in, you can see here's about at the point where it stops me from aiming. So I'm like right at the end here. So that's at the point basically where you set it at. So how far you walk into it, well, how far can you walk into your, you know, wall or blend into your short stock pose before it stops you from aiming? So I liked eight. That allowed me to just do subtle things like, I can get a little closer. So I can start smacking to the wall while still maintaining my aiming. And then when I go beyond a certain point, that's when it moves it completely out of the way. So if I just do small stuff and I smack it, it doesn't push me or stop me from aiming. It just kind of goes. And then finally, the debug trace. So right now we're just, I have it set to one frame just for the sake of being able to actually see it. Uh, basically you're just gonna have none or for one frame. If you do persistent, <laughs> you can kind of guess. This is the result that you get. And I'm gonna start dropping frames here in a bit. Yeah, my frame rate's just starting to plummet. But that's what those are. So if you just set it to none, obviously you don't have any sort of visual trace. And then if you package your game out, uh, if I recall right, this may make it to where it doesn't have any sort of visual trace. I'd have to check that to actually confirm it, but at least that's my assumption. Anyhow, so that kind of goes over the gist of how you set up the new fire and collision. So you add that virtual bone to your root, you copy over the new nodes from the example blueprint and character related inside the animation blueprint, and then graph, move over your locomotion to be before set, essential, set essentials, or at least your blend where it blends out the spine, copy over the new node, move your sprint poses to be before your site location, copy and paste this firearm collision virtual bone comment here, this whole section, to be before your site location and your super sprint, if you have one, and then right after your site location, add your firearm collision pose from this comment. So you would copy and paste this over, and then you can have the remainder of whatever you have in here. So that's gonna wrap it up. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hop in the Discord and I'll answer them.